The Nancy Davis Foundation for Multiple Sclerosis brings you our second MS Minute, Depression and Multiple Sclerosis, featuring an interview, Dr. Adam Kaplan from Johns Hopkins University. My name is Adam Kaplan. I am the Chief Psychiatric Consultant to the MS Center at Johns Hopkins. I am a psychiatrist by training and I spend my time studying uh, and providing clinical services to patients with MS. Depression is something that uh, happens. In fact, 50% of people following the diagnosis of MS will have a clinical depression. It's important to understand that this has been sort of a neglected area, that the very first patient ever described with MS by Charcot, the father of modern multiple sclerosis, was uh, someone who had such bad uh, depression that she refused to eat and needed to be force fed to keep her alive. Having said that, I think the important thing to understand is that depression is not a personal weakness. It is the result of uh, inflammation going on in the brain that can happen to a significant number of patients. It is very important. It has uh, potentially lethal consequences if untreated, but the good news is that it is very treatable. So of the symptoms that patients with MS have, this is the most treatable. It's very hard to get someone 100% walking normally once they've had difficulty with their walking or getting their sensations back 100%, but you can expect to get someone's mood and their concentration and their sleep and their uh, sort of ebullience, their their get up and go that has gotten up and gone, you can get that back again. And what's I think very important for people to know is it's not inevitable that you should be depressed. That's what happens so often since it's so common to get depressed. People just write it off and say, yeah, you'd be depressed too if you had this disorder. And that's just not true. At 10 years out, actually a study here at UCSF showed that patients with uh, MS, in fact, the majority of them not only were not depressed, but they found some benefit to their life of having MS. I know that's remarkable, but Nancy Davis is the best example I can give you. Here is someone who, as a result of multiple sclerosis, um, didn't just get into her bed and just call it quits as her doctor who diagnosed her told her to. She has now become uh, a voice, a force to be reckoned with, someone who knows an incredible amount and translates that information from all of the various uh, centers that she has, sort of getting everybody on track and, and thinking. So, you know, if you can't be normal ever again because of MS, why not be spectacular? Nancy is spectacular uh, in her ability to sort of rise to the occasion. And that's what you should shoot for, is to be able to get your life back and achieve those things, even if you can't walk people uh, can adjust to being in wheelchairs. People can do amazing things with their lives. And if you're not able to do that, you really should be evaluated to see if it's depression that's getting in your way. What can you do to avoid depression? The first thing is that people don't recognize it. And I think it's important that if you are having trouble, basically in three main areas, one is your mood. If you are just down most of the day, nearly every day, that is not normal. People with Lou Gehrig's disease, ALS, it's rare to have a clinical depression with that disease. Read Tuesdays with Maury and you can see, look at Nancy, she's a remarkable person. You know, not a, a lick of depression that you can find in her. But, uh, so you need to make sure that you, you, uh, you, you evaluate, is your mood okay? If your interest has gone, your get up and go has gotten up and gone, then that is something else to be aware of. And then if there are what we call neurovegetative symptoms, your sleep is off, particularly early morning awakenings, your energy, you're just fatigued all the time. Um, your concentration is off. Now, unfortunately, many of these sort of are symptoms of MS, but if they wax and wane, and as you feel worse, mood-wise, those symptoms get worse, you should be evaluated for depression. What can you do? Um, well, recognize that that's one. The second thing is, it turns out that depression actually leads to changes in the brain. So MS causes depression. And one of the things that the treatments for MS can do is lead to new neurons being born in the brain. It's a remarkable thing. We knew nothing about this 10 years ago. But it turns out that not only are antidepressants good at that, exercise is good at that. So the Nancy Davis Foundation has a 5K, 10K race. That's a wonderful uh, uh, example of an antidepressant. Running actually leads to the production of new neurons in the brain. Regular sleep, regular eating, regular uh, 
social activities, what often happens to people, particularly the people who are the significant others of people with MS, is they spend all their time taking care of their loved ones. They never go out and recharge their engines. They never stay in touch with their friends and do other things. You need to make sure you do those things or you're on a spiral that could lead to it. Not only does MS cause depression, but depression worsens MS. It might even be a risk factor for MS, like infections and Epstein-Barr and low vitamin D. But um, what's really interesting is it turns out these antidepressants uh, are not just antidepressants, they have anti-inflammatory properties, some of them. So lithium tends to promote the growth of new neurons in the brain. The SSRIs like Prozac and Paxil and Zoloft and these things turn out to be neuroprotective and, and actually uh, patients with MS have benefited from them, not in terms of their depression, but in terms of their MS has actually gotten better. So that's exciting. I think the important thing for people to understand is that we are actually at Hopkins, at the other centers without walls throughout the world. We are actually at the point now where we are working on treatments that we think could one day lead to a cure. So let me make sure that you understand that. That means we're working on treatments, not that we have a cure or anything, but at least it's not science fiction anymore. We're working on treatments that could one day lead to a cure if we got it right. So I think that's very exciting. I think within our lifetime, within, you know, with Nancy's work, helping to get these centers together to cooperate, helping us to, uh, to recognize the priorities and helping to pull us together to work together. Uh, I think we're going to get this. I think we're going to get a cure for MS within our lifetime. No one's working harder than Nancy. Uh, it seems like every time I see her, she's working on the MS, pulling everything together. So it's a very exciting time. We'd like to thank Dr. Adam Kaplan and Associated Television International for making this production possible. Don't forget to visit us online at www.erasms.org.